in this lecture, we'll talk about the main approaches to building the capabilities, the raw materials that an organization needs in order to succeed. This, in a way, pulls together many of the different things that we've talked about in the course over the, over the term related to things like how you, how you uh, develop your strategies, what you're good at in the value chain, where you're adding significant uh, benefits and value, um, these are the other areas where you're just kind of staying at parity with your, with your partners or with your competitors. And then also you have the situation of uh, the corporate strategy, how you might acquire companies or partner or enter new markets, that sort of thing, what industries you're interested in and what industries you feel are attractive and how, what competences you might have in order to enter those marketplaces. Here we just talk about the doing aspect of it, making sure you build the capabilities that you want and the approaches that we have when you think about making sure the organization has the, the raw materials, which in the case of business or in strategy we call these capabilities, organizational capabilities, to develop products, develop services, execute marketing plans and programs, um, come up with a good financial management, drive and a merger and acquisition process. These are all different kinds of capabilities that organizations might have. We as individuals develop skills that support a capability that an organization has to do something. If you're good at marketing, marketing communications, an organization has the capability of doing excellent PR and, and marketing commercials, uh, social media and the like. The organization does that. Me as an individual, I have skills that can fit in to that particular capability and move the organization forward. So organizations think in terms of their collection of individuals with skills that interact in a certain way to accomplish some important objective. How does one do that? Well, one way is you might build an internal capability. That is, you figure out how you get, how you bring in the people you need, the skills you need, the experiences you need and get them out working in, with customers and the like and internally develop a capability to, for example, develop a new product on the internet, some sort of a cloud computing product, whatever, um, or a manufacturing facility or customer services. You develop that internally. You might also decide that you want to do this, but you can't really wait to develop it internally. And besides, there's another group out there, another company that has these skills that we can then acquire, purchase, buy. That is uh, Facebook bought Oculus, which is a 3D experience kind of a hardware platform. They see long term the need to enhance the interface that people have with their platform into a 3D kind of a model. And so they buy Oculus to have that capability in-house. The other thing you can do, of course, is buy partnerships, and that's one of the explorations we do in, in our classroom exercises on developing strategic partnerships and the like. We can do that as well. That's another way of moving forward with different kinds of capabilities. How does one develop those capabilities internally? Well, first of all, you have to make sure that you have individuals that are as highly skilled in the areas that you need them as you possibly can. If you want to have a good, disciplined financial management organization, then you have to make sure that when you do this, you also have people that have good accounting background, good financial skills, um, understand how margins work, all the language that one has, but also the systems that generate the data, gather the data, people that know all of these things and are very, very skilled at these levels that those capabilities are, those people, those skills are available to form capabilities. The next thing you do, of course, is you coordinate these activities among people. So you need routines. You need people to be doing a book close process if it's financial management. You need people to be able to launch a new product if it's product, uh, product management. You need people that are able to develop and execute and test a new uh, technology system, if it is a systems uh, technology platform uh, capability you're trying to develop. They have to work together, so you need to be able to coordinate and integrate work groups. This is one of the things that we do when we put teams together, is to understand how the different people on the team bring different skills and integrate their activities in some way. 
and this rolls up to a large scale so you have a good finance department a good management department you have good uh, perhaps a good technology and our, our research development uh, platform uh, group or you might have a good customer service operation these are all capabilities that you build internally by first bringing on people with skills and vetting their skills when people aren't performing, eliminating them from the organization, and bringing on high performers so you bring the individual skill level, but then also the fact that they can work together and, and organize themselves effectively. The second way we can go about um, bringing on capabilities is by collaborating with others. Very common that organizations don't have all of the skills and capabilities they need. It can take a very long time to become effective at it, um, so you can use the ecosystem to take advantage of other organizations that have spent years, even decades, building certain capabilities. Like, for example, you might outsource your payroll management function to ADP. That's what they do. So you outsource to them. They do all the payroll management and, and processing, make sure everybody gets their checks. They have all the the deductions that are taken care of for health care and for taxes and all that. They specialize in that and they do an outsourced um, technology platform for, for, uh, for payroll management. So you might do that. You also might find a firm that does things that are, is, are particularly good perhaps at creative development. You might have a marketing program to sell your products but you don't necessarily know how to make good commercials. You get somebody that's very creative. They specialize in commercials. They're very good at recruiting talent. They're very good at writing like humorous or exciting or interesting commercials that catch someone's attention. So you partner with them instead of developing that, that uh, particular capability in-house. And sometimes you want to work with somebody together. You both have a certain complementary skill, but you work together to develop something new and entirely different, a new innovation. You work with a partner to launch a new product set that maybe has some of your particular skills, your particular uh, product idea, your particular technologies, but they bring a customer set, a different segment of the market. Maybe it's a demographic you used to target young people, and they bring a demographic, demographic of people that are in their 30s and 40s, perhaps. They can also use some of the technology that you've developed and you bring those two together so it becomes a product that is now targeted at this different segment that they understand and they have a capability of understanding that segment you have the technology bring those together and you launch a new product or service and that's how you go about getting all the internal skills you need the raw materials you need to be ready to go forward with um, with developing your strategy and implementing strategic initiatives in the next lecture, we'll talk about different ways of organizing to try and make take advantage of these various kinds of capabilities going forward. That will be in our very next lecture.